Hey guys, it's me Stace. Today we're using the Brother Skin Cut Machine to make this really fun box. It's a good size, about 3x3. Three three, and you can fill it with all kinds of treats and trinkets. Let's go to the computer and we'll get started. Alright, here we are at the computer. I'm already logged into the Canvas workspace. I'm also using a desktop version. The very first thing it brings up is this Canvas Project Pattern Collection window. Inside the search box, just going to click in that with your mouse and you will see all these categories come up. You want to click on the category gift box. Then we're going to scroll down to find the box we're making, which is this one here, this dice gift box. If you click on that, you'll see it's going to bring up a preview window and mat A and mat B. Mat A is the box, and then mat B are the pieces that go inside the box. You can see the dots come through that. I want to make a box that does not have the dots, so I'm not going to use mat B, so I'm just going to click on mat A and transfer that over, make sure it's transferred over, which it did. Now I have the dots on here, so I'm going to get rid of the dots. So I'm going to right click on the image, choose ungroup, and then take the circles off. Then you want to go back and regroup that piece back together. So I'm going to right click on it again and choose a group. Do the same for this image. I'm going to right click on it and choose ungroup. Take the circles off. Then highlight the entire piece again and right click and choose a group. So I can remove the circles. I'm not going to use those. Now if you click on the larger piece here and go to your far right toolbar, it is the second icon down, which is your edit panel, you will see the width of this piece is 11.30. I want to resize this so I can cut it out using 8.5 by 11 cardstock. Whenever you're resizing anything that has another piece that goes to it, you want to make sure you're resizing both pieces together. So I'm going to take this top piece and bring this down so it's overlapping the other piece. Highlight both pieces again, right click and choose group. So when I move one, they're both going to move together. Go back to the edit panel on the far right, you'll see our width has not changed, it's still 11.3. You want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio box is checked and change the width and make this be 10.5. And then click on enter and come back and right click and choose ungroup. So now we resize the both pieces. So I'm able to cut each one out using 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I do want to change the colors of these pieces to white. Now I want to figure out the size I need for the paper for the box. So on my up in the upper left hand corner, you will see we have an arrow, we have a hand, and we have a magnifying glass. You want to click on the magnifying glass. You will see your cursor change. Then you want to left click and hold it down and hover over that whole first half of that box then release your cursor and you will see we have that but our cursor is still a magnifying glass so you want to go back up and change it by clicking on the hand so this piece here we were at the dotted lines that's our square mark this is where paper is going to go I want to figure out what size that is so I'm going to go to my left hand side toolbar the second icon down is your shapes tab or your shapes library I'm going to click on that I'm going to click on a square. You'll see the square here. I'm going to change the color of this square to a color that we can see. Just make it be this blue color. All right, so I'm going to move my square down. And I want to look at my, the, my piece here. I want to put my corner, the le top left hand corner of my square in the top left corner of this piece. So I'm going to bring this square up just so it's inside that score mark. This way it's going to leave a little bit of a border around it. Okay, that right there I think looks pretty good. I'm going to take the bottom of the box or the square piece and click on that little handle piece to resize it. There we go, and then bring this piece in just so we can have a rough estimate of how big this piece is. Let me make it be a little bit bigger. Okay, so if I look at my left hand, my right hand side toolbar again, we can see the width of this box or this square is 2.78 by 2.78. So now I know I can cut my box out using 8.5 by 11 cardstock because we resize that, then cut my own pattern paper out with my trimmer that size to be about 2 and 3 quarter by 2 and 3 quarter. I can now delete that square, I no longer need that. Let me zoom back out on my mat. We'll go back to 50% here. Now I want to like I said, cut each piece out using 8.5 by 11 cardstock. So I do want to hide one of these pieces. So I have this piece selected. 
I'm going to go to my far right toolbar again. The third icon down this time is your Layers panel. And whatever is highlighted over here is also highlighted over here. You will see we have all these pieces that make this piece, which is a group. So I'm going to go ahead and close the eye on that grouping. So I can just send this to my machine. So I'm going to go to the top toolbar, click on File. I'm going to click on Export. A warning box is going to come up saying that the image that we hid is not going to be able to transfer, which is OK. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to transfer. So I'm going to send it to my machine, cut that out. When that's done, I'll come back, open the eye on, on that layers panel of my other box, and then hide this one. So just hide the eye on that one. Then I'll bring this one up and do the same thing. Send this to my machine, cut it out. We'll go to the table and put our box together. All right, we are back. Everything is cut out. I did cut my paper. This is uh, five pieces, two and three quarter by two and three quarter. Uh, same color as my cardstock. This piece is two by one and three quarter, and then a piece of white is one and three quarter by one and a half. We're first going to start by folding on all those score marks and take our bone folder to it to give it a better crease. Okay, let's take the bone folder to that. Whenever you're making boxes, it is important to have a nice crease line on it. And these two down here. All right, and then this piece as well. And I'm gonna put my paper on after I assemble the box, only because I am using directional paper. So you have this piece and you have this piece. What you want to do is take this piece and put adhesive or glue on one of these flaps. I'm just using my advanced tape glider. All right, we're going to take this one, we're going to turn this one sideways and lay this piece on top of that one. Make sure you're lining up the score mark with the edge. You can also flip it over like this if it's easier so you can see the score mark better. Give that a good rub. All right, so now we have what looks like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on these two flaps here. They're gonna get glued right to there. And I think I'll just use my art glitter glue for this one. You wanna have your glue go edge to edge. All right, bring this piece over. I'm going to go in there and just hold that flap down just to make sure my glue grabs. All right, and I'm going to glue this flap. Onto this side right here. And again, I'm just going to go in there and press down on that flap. All right, so now we have these two flaps and we have these two flaps here. I want to put glue on these flaps here. Again, you want to have your glue go edge to edge. Nice, even layer. I'm actually going to take my finger and just spread that glue around a little bit. And then I'm going to bring this side up first, line that one up. Do the other side. Just kind of get it started. Now I'm going to go in there again and hold down on those flaps, allowing that glue to dry. Okay, now we have this is the top of the box, and then we have this piece that's going to fold in to close our box. However, I am going to put a notch here after I glue my paper on. All right, so I'm done with my art glitter glue. I'm going to set that aside and put the pin back in that. All right, now we're gonna grab our paper. And this is, uh, the cardstock I'm using is Paper Tray Ink Melonberry and the paper pack I'm using is Fruity Tooty. All right. Sorry about that, I guess my camera died. 
All right, let's go ahead and put these on the sides. We're going to do all four of the sides and also the top. All right, now this one I'm going to put on the top here. And then I'm going to do the one in the front with the notch. So we have all the sides done and our top. And now this one here, then I just have a a three quarter inch circle punch. I think I'm gonna glue it down first, but I'm gonna use my liquid glue on this one. And then I'll cut that notch out of it. I definitely think it needs a finger notch. And I'm using my liquid glue, so when I do punch it out, it's still gonna have glue on it. Oh, okay. Having glue issues today. All right, so get that one on there. Straight, centered. Okay. I'm just going to go in there and push on it just to make sure it's down there really well. And then take my <clears throat> circle punch. If you don't have a punch, you can just, you know, cut out a notch with scissors, but I definitely think you need that so you know where to open the box at. So I'm going to close that. I like that it closes by itself and that it stays shut. It's giving me an issue now, but it was staying shut earlier. There we go. Okay, so it does stay shut. You can see there where to open it. All right, now we're going to do our little greeting. As I said, I'm using a Sweet Stuff, the stamp set from May May Made. You can see it has Sweet Stuff, Sweet Treats for You, Enjoy the Treat, Something Yummy for Your Tummy. Thank you for being so sweet. You make life sweet and holiday treats, all kinds of ones, and then just for you. And I'm using the one that says, you make life sweet. I'm using Melonberry uh, uh, ink from Paper Tray. You know, I wasn't a fan of this of these ink pads. I'm still not, um, they're not my favorite, but I do like the Paper Tray ink cardstock um, better than the stamp. Well, I like it the same as, as a Stampin' Up! cardstock, but it's a lot cheaper. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over, grab some foam squares. But the, the ink pads are growing on me. All right, it's gonna take this. I'm just gonna use four. I think four is fine on this little piece. And again, this was uh, one and a half by one and three quarters. And this piece was two by one and three quarters. Now we're gonna put that, now you can put it on top of the box, on the front of the box. I'm not quite sure where I wanna put it. Hmm, if I put it here, I can kinda of go, well I can either go crooked on either one. I think I'm gonna go on the top. Oh, decisions, right? Nope, I'm gonna go right here. Okay, so I'm just going to center that in there, and again, open that up just to press on that glue. And then we already gave these a squish, take the backings off, and that quickly our box is done. And I will show you the card kit in a minute. Alrighty, so we're going to put that right there. Isn't that cute? Fun little box, a good size too. I want to say it's uh, three by three, roughly. Let me measure real quick. Yep, three by three. So it can hold um, note cards, it can hold all kinds of treats in there, all kinds of little trinkets. Just a great little box. You can wrap it with a bow, all, all different kinds of ways you can embellish it. All right, here is the card kit here, the box kit. I do include all the papers as well as the piece for the green. Um, so to win the card kit, leave me an emoji that is a fruit. Um, this one has cherries on it, but you can leave a banana, whatever kind of fruit you like. And I'll pick a winner for this card kit on Saturday. Any questions, guys, please let me know. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.